sound I heard it we all know it's that time of year again that fateful fateful time when the chimney man finds us all and after many years of studying and researching in this field I have come here today to present to you my findings to teach you what the chimney man is saying I'm here to teach you the voices from the chimney. The language of Santa. Hey everybody, what have you done? Here on this lovely, lovely, chilling, chilling Christmas day. I hope if you're in the United States you're waking up to this. And you're going to be educated because you probably just experienced something of a Lovecraftian nature. Unlike any seen on Earth. Eternal and I joined together to finally, for the first time in human history, make an actual accurate translation of what that foul, foul, fat man is saying when he rides in on his reindeer and gives us gifts. So I'm here to teach you today about the language of Santa. Let's begin. Come on, Lapis. Don't be rude, we have guests. In English, we call it Santa, but in reality, it is known more as the voice in the chimney, or... Whoa. A beautiful creation that was, a. Uh, uh, d d discovered by myself and Eternal. Discovered, yeah. Santa is a language that is known for its extremely simple phonology, but massive tonal inventory. We'll get to that. It has a base 25 counting system because this is Santa we're talking about. The 25th is the most important day of the year to him. It features an extremely heavy qualifier system. I'll explain what that means. And, and most interestingly, it has an ingressive egressive dichotomy with all of its sounds. The consonants of Santa are ha, 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 and then. This is hard to do. <laughs> and its vowels are o o o o o o o o o voiceless vowel. Then there's also six registers from which there are 432 combinations of tones. Yeah, 432 combinations because the first and the last articulations of the vowels can feature all six registers within the tone. The middle tone can only feature the fourth, fifth, and sixth. It's extremely difficult for a normal human to perceive, but, you know, Santa operates on a completely different level than us mortals. So when you take those 108 tonal combinations and then multiply it by the four vowels, then you get 432 possible combinations of what goes on in that vowel spot. It's bad. Now, with that in mind, the phonotactics. The phonotactics look like this disturbing feature right here. We have up to five H's, um, H's representing the consonants, as I've so shown you with the long and 
overlong and super long and hyper long consonants. And then A represents vowels that are in the first or third length position. And then B represents the vowels that are in the second length position, as I just explained. That's how we get to the 108 tones and 432 possible vowel combinations. Um, oh yeah, not only that, but you take the whole thing, uh, flip it backwards, and to change the direction of airflow to inwards, and that will account for the other half of the language. That's right, there is a dichotomy between egressive, or the typical outward breathing pulmonic sounds, and the ingressive. The romanization is quite a beautiful thing. So for the several lengths of H's, their length is denoted by adding horizontal slashes into them. One, two, three, four, as you can see here in the visuals. This also applies for the pharyngeal H, which by definition also has its uh, little horizontal slash up in the top, which creates for an absolutely beautiful array right there. Then what we have for the vowels in their romanization is, since we have six tones here and the typical IPA representation bases itself on a five register tone system, we have to accommodate for the sixth register. So what do we do? Of course, obviously, what else would we do other than utilizing these six symbols here. For the first lowest tone, we have two, a double grave. Then for the second register, we have a single grave. For the third register, we have a horizontal line. For the fourth register, we have a single acute. And for the fifth register, we have a double acute. And for the sixth register, we have the little X. To make everything just even more beautiful, when you combine all those things together, they stack up on top of each other into a tri triple diacritic vowel symbol, and it really makes it beautiful. You read them from bottom to top. Now you can tell whether a word is going to be ingressive or egressive based on where the H's are present in the word. Any word that begins with an H or pharyngeal H is going to be an egressive word. And any word that begins with a vowel and ends in an H or pharyngeal H will be an ingressive syllable. You read the whole thing left to right, but that's just how it works in Santa. On to the grammar. Be jolly, if you can still muster the strength. This is pretty dark. Notable grammatical features. So the standard sentence structure is VSO, but it gets much more complicated than that. We have qualifiers and null qualifiers that determine case, aspect, mood, all that kind of stuff. There's no first person pronoun. Verbs inflect for person, aspect, and mood. We use a base 25 numerical system. We have locational and temporal cases and postpositions, and a lot more. It's brutal. So qualifiers, what are qualifiers? They are particles that have to be attached to words in a specific pattern in order to elicit meaning in Santa. And it's a very mathematic structure how this is based. Every sentence must contain two plus four times n qualifiers, or n is a natural number or zero. Now, if you don't do math much and that doesn't make sense to you, Basically, it makes it so that a sentence has to consist of multiples of three words, even if adding in a third word doesn't do anything. That'll be the null qualifier. So this usually, but not always, there's some exceptions, yields a sentence that contains triplets of words. And of course, that leads to the common misconception in our society that Santa, when he says, ho, 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 People think that's just a laugh. No, ho 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 is not merely a laugh. You can't really, really even perceive what he's truly saying in that ho 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 unless you memorize those 432 tonal combinations. Like, unless you got Rick and Morty brain, it ain't happening. Don't try, don't try and think you're smarter than Santa. He'll find you. Here's a list of the qualifiers, the qualifiers that determine the part of speech. Now you can see. There's the root, which doesn't have anything except for its null qualifier. Um, we have nouns, which can be concrete or abstract. We have adjectives, adverbs, then verbs, stative or essive, which are about being in a state of existence. We have 
intransitive, then we have transitive, and then we have causative, when the verb is causing something else to happen. You get the point. With this root word for age, which is... Null qualifiers. I mentioned it a couple times. What does it mean? So, null qualifiers only exist because the syntax of Santa requires them. They have no semantic import whatsoever. Each qualifier has a corresponding null qualifier, which must be used in conjunction with it, should no other qualifier be present. Thus, old person would be... Or... So, you have usually spelt as that is the base null qualifier, which is used either whenever a null qualifier is required and there's no other specific null qualifier that would be appropriate for the context in question, or always in the empty qualifier construct. The qualifier conjunction. If there are groups of more than two qualifiers that qualify the same root, like the same noun, verb, etc., are separated by the empty root, which is which is spelt with the H of the tail, it is used to provide a position for null qualifiers to attach to and is completely devoid of any meaning. And that doesn't mean it means nothing, you know, in quotation marks. No, it literally doesn't mean anything. It is just to make the sentence flow. Even though there are a plethora of different null qualifiers, the empty qualifier construct is always spelt and pronounced as <sighs> And every qualified phrase must be in the form of root qualifier qualifier or root qualifier 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 or etc you know have 2 6 10 14 18 thus there can never be two empty qualifier constructs in a row for example <laughs> the phrase to cause someone to make someone else seem old would be pronounced as this <sighs> oh, uh, whoa. Whoa. Which is age, causative marker, causative marker, null, noun of concrete, null, and null. Qualifier tagging. So this is when sometimes it's necessary to separate a qualifier from the root it qualifies to in order to reduce the number of null qualifiers, right? Convoluted sentence. Nouns and their corresponding qualifiers can be tagged to signify that they belong together. This is done by appending or prepending, depending on whether it's egressive or ingressive, the same number of H's or pharyngeal H. For example, the old man is causing another old man to become the one who makes him seem old. Would be... <sighs> <laughs> Nouns. Nouns are defined both by their qualifiers, which we discussed in a previous slide, and their cases. The cases in Santa are used mostly for marking location and time, though a lot of analogies can be made between these locational and temporal based cases with other situations. If possession is being marked, it is done with juxtaposition, that's because there's no genitive case. If you look here at all of the cases that we have, I mean since they're all just qualifiers, you could call them cases or you could call them just post positions, because that's essentially what they do. Nominative, accusative, vocative, locative, allative, adhesive, antessive, apodessive, inessive, intradive, pertingent, postessive, subessive, superessive, temporal, and limitative. Now notice there is no genitive, that's why possession is marked by just slapping 
slapping the next root right next to it. Juxtapos juxtaposition, straight up. Verbs in Santa. So in Santa, verbs inflect for person, aspect, and mood. Since Christmas is about giving gifts, again, it would be totally unchristmas like if there was a first person singular pronoun. We have second person, third person, and impersonal, right? And then we have perfective and imperfective aspects with qualifiers and null qualifiers, if that ever comes up. And then we have moods. We have indicative, hortative, imperative, and subjunctive. Now, hortative is kind of like uh, a should kind of situation, similar to optative, etc. Now, adjectives and adverbs. So, adjectives and adverbs are formed by attaching the adjective or adverbs qualifiers, which we saw in that previous table, to a word. For example, the word nice is Whoa! 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 And then the adverb soon with a null qualifier would be Oh! Whoa! Now counting. Counting in Santa relies on a strict base 25 counting system for its use by Santa to prepare for Christmas. Santa usually doesn't count past the 31st, and the word zero is just coal. Now, the numbers look like this. I'm not going to count them all out for you right now, but it's a pretty beautiful list. kind of operates similar to the way you'd imagine Roman numerals to work, with lots of mores and eaves signifying things leading up to another piece. Every number is a word that represents a part of Santa's process of preparing for the toy delivery on Christmas. Um, and then by the 31st, he hibernates. And the cycle continues from there. For telling time, there's also an interesting thing. So since Santa lives at the North Pole and he spends a lot of his time, you know, passing several months just kind of idling around, hibernating or just watching existence, things kind of go on more of like a, a metaphor to seasons kind of way. AKA, if you look at the way Santa tells time, you see that there's only eight distinctions of time for him, and each is based on comparisons of noon or midnight on equinoxes or solstices. So 6 a.m. is midday on the spring equinox. 12 p.m. is midnight on the summer solstice. 6 p.m. is midday on the fall equinox. 12 a.m. is midday on the winter solstice. And then there's halfway marks where you would say just by halfway through spring, halfway through summer, halfway through fall, halfway through winter, etc. And these are relatively scientifically accurate. Look it up. And now, since at this point you have to be, like there's no way you're not an expert in the Santa language, I feel like we all need to cap this off with just a beautiful, beautiful, classic Christmas carol. Oh. Oh, I mean, it's not even a Christmas carol. It's actually a pretty creepy song, but I figured it would work just for this. And uh, it's a little ditty that I like to call Santa Claus is coming to town. Here, here, here we go. <clears throat> Feel free to join in. Santa Claus is coming to town? You mean... Oh. 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 She's making a list and checking it twice. You mean? Oh.
He's gonna find out who's naughty or nice. You mean... Santa Claus. <coughs> Santa Claus is coming to town. Sees you when you're sleeping? You mean? Whoa! If you've been bad or good, you mean... So be good, for goodness sake. Santa's singing along as he flies through the sky. <laughs> oh, God. There you go. That's the- that's all you need to know. Listen closely next time you start hearing the voices come from the chimney, you know? Because who knows what he's saying? Who knows if he's just singing a happy tune like I just did so happily? Or who knows if he's out to get you? That's why it's very important that you learn how to speak Santa fluidly. And I'm sorry if this comes a little bit late. It's probably too late for all of you now. But for next time, for next time, you'll know exactly what to say when you hear that voice come from the chimney. So with that, that is the end of this deep and in-depth session of research done by myself in Eternal. You can check out our dictionary and grammar spreadsheet in the description, though it is 
not very well organized right now. It probably will be soon, but we're not doing that at the moment, but it exists. Um, yes. Happy holidays, everyone. Enjoy the nightmares that I have likely just caused all of you, and the likely throat damage as I have incurred upon myself. Go off, be merry, live your lives. I'm gonna deal with the ramifications of what I've just done. So yes, please, if you like this, like, comment, subscribe, become a patron on my Patreon, join the Discord server. 2022 is gonna be a real blast and fill out the survey for the Conlang census if you haven't done that yet. All right, everybody. I will see you again. Jerry Seinfeld will see you in the new year. Lapis Lazuli will see you in the new year. It's been a beautiful one. I will see you all next time. Goodbye. Hang on out. This is profoundly itchy, and it does not fit me at all. <laughs>